Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about blood worms. So blood worms, common food to feed fish. I'm allergic to it, uh, to blood worms in particular. But I have here some frozen ones that I can kind of pop out without having to handle too much. Sometimes I'll get the big bag because it's such a better deal to get them in bulk. But uh, these are easy. I can throw a cube in for them to eat in this tank. In my bigger tanks, I'll throw a whole cube in. But let's talk a little bit about blood worms. What are blood worms? You know? And while we talk about it, why don't I throw a couple in so there's something going on for you to watch while I discuss blood worms. Okay. So, blood worms. Those will melt. Um, they will pick them apart pretty harshly. Uh, so frozen versus live blood worms, there's pretty much no comparison. Uh, the frozen ones don't have as much oomph in them as far as iron and other things. To solve this problem, so well, let me back. Track. So what happens is when they freeze something that is hollow and full of water and blood, that expands and it breaks the cell walls when it's been frozen. So they try to flash freeze it and that stops some of it. But when you freeze something like that, you end up with a cube like the one you see here that's falling apart, which actually has a lot of liquid and ice in between. Now what's that ice made out of? That ice is made out of the inside of the worms that has broken out as it melts. Um, so it falls apart, and live blood worms would have about 50% more iron and other things in them themselves. However, what Hikari and other companies do is they actually take a bunch of vitamins and iron and they feed the blood worms way more than a normal blood worm would ever eat, usually. And uh, they feed them basically until they're full and until they're about to explode with blood and um, vitamins, basically. Uh, and then they end up uh, basically being full of that stuff and it kind of counters for the fact that they're frozen. So... In the end, the frozen ones have more vitamins in them, but the the uh, dried ones are are the bottom rung. So if you have to get dried ones, I understand, but if you can get frozen ones, much better. And if you can beyond that, get live ones, much better. But make sure that you have gloves on if you don't know whether or not you're allergic to them. Because something about them has uh, a lot of people having reactions. You can see my puffer fish are uh, starting to f notice that the blood worms are there. And you can see the puffer. There's one uh, pea puffer eating. But there's six pea puffers in the tank. So I'm sure they'll all be in on it soon. So in any case, when we're talking about these worms, where do they come from? What are they? So these blood worms, they are from midge flies. Now, a midge fly is kind of a rough name for a bunch of uh, mosquito-like flies. You've probably seen them. They have kind of feathery tails, but look like a mosquito with feathery tails. And when they land, they kind of cross their front arms. And in, in Greek... It means someone who pantomimes, their Latin name does, uh, or their Greek name, I should say, but it's their Latin name. So the family name is uh, Chironomidae, and that means, or Chironomidae, and that means somebody that pantomimes, so somebody who has their arms out and is moving them, because when they land, they often sit and kind of like, uh, almost like like Mr. Burns in The Simpsons uh, rubbing his hands together or something. They sit and they do that for a long time. These flies that you see, though, they lay eggs in the, in the water or in soil that's usually wet. And then the eggs turn into larvae. 
and the larva is these worms. And these worms can be uh, up to an inch long or so. And they are red not because they drink a bunch of blood necessarily, but they are red because they are clear worms and you are seeing the hemoglobin or the iron-rich red blood cells throughout the worms. So that's why they're called blood worms, just because you can see through them. They're actually the young stage of a midge fly. Now, the interesting thing about that is, I say young stage, but they actually live about, oh, I, you know, they can live three years in a blood worm stage at the bottom of a lake in the mud feeding around on detritus, uh, algae, plankton, things like that. And they will actually live most of their life that way because when they come out as flies, the fly part of their life is so small. It is a couple weeks. Some of the species don't even have mouths as adults that open and chew. Like they don't even have jaws because they're just alive to lay eggs. That's the only reason they fly is to go to new bodies of water in a week or two and lay eggs and then they die. So you can see the lemon tetra is fighting the, the little pea puffers, but the pea puffers will hold their own. Uh, and only pea puffers bug pea puffers. So in any case, they are a great food source. They have a lot of iron, uh, omega fatty acids in them. Uh, lots of vitamins, uh, B12, B6, uh, C, thiamine, uh, niacin, beta carotene, and then folic acid, obviously, they have uh, in them. And so that's all the stuff that your fish, your carnivore fish need to, or omnivore fish, need in their system. It helps keep their color good. And if you feed them live worms, it really... Uh, it really gets their uh, hunting spirit into them, which can sometimes make them more lively and more colorful. Sometimes they'll uh, color up just to hunt, you know, just because they have a color that they, they hunt with either as camouflage or as something else. So, uh, you know, as like a, a warning to other predators in the area, think something like that. So it's better to feed live if you can. But I, I don't have any place that provides live blood worms, uh, so I feed frozen. So when they're live, they're about 55% protein, 3% fat, and 5% fiber for your fish. And when they're frozen, they're usually 4 to 5% protein by mass, um, which is a crazy drop. And that's why they feed them all those vitamins and uh, things that mimic what protein would have in it. And uh, like Hikari will say that the, they are bio-pure blood worms. And uh, they basically have, um, they tell you right on the package that they feed the blood worms this stuff right here. Water, vitamin B12, uh, supplement. Uh, so you can read all that stuff right there. Um, so, and it also warns you about allergies on, on your average bag. But the brand doesn't so much matter. There are a lot of species that they use. There's about a dozen in particular that they use. And it's not that there's massively superior species out of the 1,200 midges that live in North America. Uh, or, pardon me, uh, 1,157 species that live in North America. Uh, but they basically, um, they are easier to grow. So some, some of them are flies longer and larvae longer. And so what they want for, uh, you know, some a good farm situation rather than catching these guys out in the wild, which is more work, is they want a species that is a lar is larva for a shorter time, that's big larva, and that is a fly which lays eggs a, a, a better ratio of the time. So maybe a week as a fly and four or five 
months as a larva instead of, you know, three years, like I said, they can take up to. So that's what the scoop on blood worms. They can carry parasites, but a lot if you get them at a company that farms them, uh, like Hikari or something like that, you'll usually, uh, or Sarah, or, you know, whoever sells them, uh, you'll usually see that they are pretty clean of that stuff. But if you get wild blood worms or you want to grow them yourself, which is a little bit of work, you got to have air in the container enough for your flies to hatch and then um yeah it's just it's it's uh it's a bit of work but you can do it people do it frequently and uh yeah so i would buy from the the larger companies you know and the kind of blood worms you see at like a bait shop or something for fishing that's a different kind of blood worm and i'm going to talk all about that in another video it's also a type of food which the fish will eat and that has a lot of the same things in it and it's almost a bigger version of it but that is a venomous worm that grows out in the tide flats on the east coast of like Maine and uh so yeah that's it's a different uh it's a different beast altogether but it it makes 14 inch long up to 14 inch long uh bloody worms that are also called blood worms. So, I recommend feeding your tank a cube of these guys for, you know, ev like, your cube, I think, about, if you look at your fish, about 10 to 15 fish, their weight, should, you can feed them a cube a day, uh, is what I, I personally think. So, I, I would say that, uh, 12 times, 10 or 12 times the weight of the cube in fish so those lemon tetras, you know, if I had 12 of those, I'd say they probably weigh about the same as a cube. I'd feed them a cube of it all together with the guppies and other stuff. I know the reflection on the other side of the tank is rough, but uh, I think I have about uh, 20 or 25 times the weight of two cubes. And so I put two cubes into the tank. You don't want to feed them this too much or they can get kind of fat <laughs> and have other health problems from getting too much of a good thing. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to feed them that frequently and uh, at least three to five times a week is no problem for most fish. And just be sure to vary their diet with flake food or other worms or if you're doing all live then other live things like uh, Daphnia or whatnot. So, I hope that helps y'all with blood worms, and we'll talk about the oceanic blood worm, which is venomous and pretty interesting about all their venom, in another video. Alright guys, take care of your fish, take care of your tanks, and I will talk to you guys later. This is The Secret History Inside Your Aquarium with Alex Williamson. Say goodbye to the puffers. Goodbye to the puffers.